Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money show. Today I'm going to follow the suggestion of one of the, our most recent followers uh, to whom I was talking or exchanging comments on a Facebook post yesterday. Her name is Janae Grimes. Uh, she complained a bit about me speaking very slowly and I explained to her, well, I'm not a native English speaker, so it's not so easy to keep up with the speed. Uh, however, sh um, she became a follower yesterday, so I'm going to follow her. Uh, I'm going to take her suggestion. And before we begin the video, I'm going to read a short bullet list of the items for the video today. Uh, so the points for today are we are going to discuss just a little bit about the live stream voting that I posted yesterday on Twitter. Uh, then we are going to, uh, I'm going to discuss about a new poll just for the day that most people would like to have the live stream. Then we are going to check the price to time model after that. And of course, current Bitcoin price action. Uh, after that, we are going to see the charge, uh, charts for the MRI uh, strategy. After that, we are going to see the strategy sh uh, charts for the pro indicators. Um, framework and in the end I'm also going to answer one of the questions I've been getting a lot which is how to manage different entry points positions uh, I believe many people struggle with this uh, question and I'm going to try to explain it the best way I can and uh, give you guys my take on that so without um, anything else on the bullet uh, list bullets list let's um let me just ask you to smash the like button if you enjoyed this content from the last videos and this one too and share the videos with your friends subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's go directly to the screen share okay so here we are this is the first item on the list we have the tweet where I uh, asked everyone about uh, what you guys think about an FU Money live stream for testing purposes. And I say testing purposes because I never streamed live with my current laptop, which is uh, a few years old already. This is a quad core only. So I've been having some issues with the sync between audio and video. And it's not just moving the audio to match the video, it's because the video itself sometimes is delayed because the hardware um, processing on the computer is not so strong. So it's not easy to uh, sync the audio. So that's the reason why I was uh, asking for testing purposes. Uh, the big majority of people answered, hell yeah, with 96.4% of the votes asking me to have a live stream for this show. So I guess we are going to um, discuss on the next poll, which I'm going to post just after this video. Um, or I can even do it right now. So let me just go here. it and let's tweet it okay so this is now live the poll I'm giving you guys uh, an opportunity to choose between Saturday Sunday or Wednesday and of course if the majority chooses Saturday this could be done tomorrow of course if you spend 24 hours uh, if that poll will be live for 24 hours before the results are announced I will only be able to do the live stream tomorrow if this is so it's now it's now 4 30 p.m. here in Portugal uh, so I will only be able to do the live stream if this is tomorrow after 4 30 p.m. which is Western European time um, so you have you guys have to take that into account uh, otherwise if we if you choose Sunday or Wednesday it can be 
Uh, I will, I will, of course, tell you guys what time this will be because we will have a bigger time frame where we can have the live stream. Okay, so this is done. We have already one vote. I just got one vote right now. And let's see what happens until tomorrow. And please vote on this poll and choose the day that you would like the most. Of course, Sunday is also interesting because it's the end of the week. We can have a better analysis for how the weekly candle is going or about to close. And <clears throat> of course, it would be also interesting on Sundays. So let's see what you guys choose. And I will, of course, do it on the day that you decide. OK, so that is the uh, first item on the list and now we can go to the price to time model which is this chart here let's uh, check how things are going and I will zoom for you guys because some people complain they can't see because of the resolution of the screen so right now everything looks good I would say this is the perfect position for the price action of Bitcoin right now the price to time model uh, as you know, has this exponential curve here in orange uh, in the middle of the rectangle. And as long as we keep the price action or Bitcoin keeps the price action below this line, everything looks healthy and sustainable for a nice rise to the top. If we cross over to the upper side of this line, you guys know, of course, what happens already. We have some correction probabilities and these corrections usually are very, very big. Uh, we had a few around 25 or 30 percent, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember right now, but that's OK. No problem. So everything looks good according to the price of time model. I can zoom out again. Uh, so far, nothing really extraordinary happening here. So as you guys know, also, these are, these are weekly candles and this candle is still red. But I guess in two days we will find out if we were able to uh, break the resistance around 60,000 and uh, have this candle turn green even below the curved line, which would be very, very nice. Okay, so let's go to the next item on the bullet list. And this is the MRI strategy. As you know, also, this is the indicator by tone vase. So let's start by the weekly chart using the MRI. Uh, just waiting for the indicator to load. OK, that's it. So we have a flip on the uh, count for the MRI. I don't like it. We have uh, we have this candle here for the week, which is still red. We were not able to break the, the 59, 60,000 uh, resistance. And Bitcoin is trading for some time already, almost one month inside the 56 to 59 area. Uh, so let's see how this evolves. But as for the bigger time frame of the weekly chart, everything looks good so far. We don't have any bearish signals. Uh, the 20 period moving average still catching up with the price action. No indication that the price will touch this line soon. And even if it does, it will be much higher than the current position for the moving average. Also, the RSI is becoming completely neutral, just going sideways. This is a good sign also because we had the bearish divergence, but we are now on the verge of having some sideways action. And possibly if we break the resistance of 60,000, possibly the RSI could turn up again although I don't like that this is on overextended territory. So uh, the MACD continues exactly almost the same as yesterday. The lines are approaching, uh, nothing new here. The Fisher distance also neutral. So everything looks good so far on the weekly chart. The only thing I don't like is this flip on the count. We now have a red one on the MRI count and I would like to see a third uh, a, th a green three three here for this candle but for that to happen we need to break the 59 resistance so let's see how sunday uh, two days from now this will end uh, probably if you choose the sunday for the live stream maybe we could even have a live stream uh, closer to the uh, close of this candle and let's go then to the daily chart <coughs> 
Okay, the daily chart shows that we have been raging around this area that I uh, informed you guys already, the 56 to 59K. Uh, we had a big drop yesterday. However, today we almost recovered all the gains that were lost. So the green candle is almost the same size as the red candle of yesterday. We had a sell signal here with the star, but however, we are having a nice uh, re um, reversal of the price action to the upside, and that is good. So it means that, as I said on my previous video yesterday, we uh, the moving averages held the pr uh, held the price here, and we still had some uh, you know room to the downside if we needed the help of the 50 period moving average and the trend line in white that you can see over here. So everything looks good. We still did not break the support of the 56,000 and that's a good sign also. So this is a count from one to three already on uh, daily, uh, daily MRI. After this stop we had here, we did not have the one to four candle correction. We had this uh, decline in the price action yesterday but we are now going back again to the upside which I would prefer that we went we went back to the upside tomorrow so I would really like the reversal to have happened tomorrow instead of today because then we would have a one to four candle correction textbook you know MRI textbook um, price action when you have a correction and then we could reset the count in a new candle tomorrow have the four in red here and then probably tomorrow or sunday start a new count in green to the upside and break this damn resistance we are having here around the 60 59 60 000. okay uh, all good for the daily i just continue to see a decline in volume um, i don't like that i would much prefer the volume to be higher and that would be also a good indication that the price action to the upside was favorable or more probable. The RSI continues to go sideways, nothing to see here. The MACD also continues to go sideways, no big action here. And the Fisher distance is neutral also. So I don't see any bearish signals so far that this market could turn bearish soon. I also don't believe the relevance of the Pi cycle indicator, as I uh, told you guys uh, some time before. Uh, I was, um, uh, I continue to investigate the Pi cycle indicator. I don't see any relevance except for the overextended price action, which accurately indicates when it happens but i would not say that the pi cycle indicator can tell you when the top will occur or even if this is a top or not so i don't see it as relevant and just as another indicator that could point to an extended um, price action or overbought signal something like that so it's not so relevant to me right now uh, when I have the price to time model, which indicates a better time frame for a possible top than the price cycle indicator. Uh, and many other models that you have out there, like the stock to flow model and others, and even the, you know, Willy Woo analysis on chain analysis also gives you a very good indication of when a top might occur, much better than the price cycle indicator. But anyway, it's your choice. You choose the indicators you want to use and that's up to you so this was the analysis for the daily chart let's move to the four hour and we will start to see some uh, good signs here or we could have a better analysis of the bitmax funding rate so as you see we had this decline in the price action yesterday the 56 support as i pointed out on my chart since some time ago was a really good support uh, together with the 200 period moving average on the four hour, which is not so relevant to me. I would like, I like to see the 200 uh, period moving average on uh, weekly charts or daily charts. Uh, the four hour, however, also together with my support level around 56 was a good 
support for the decline of yesterday. There were several attempts to break this support around 56. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five candles tried to break the support of the 56,000, but the support held in place. And now we are having a reversal of the price action to the upside, which is a very good, um, very good bullish sign for Bitcoin. So now we are trying to break again what became resistance around the 58,000. And if we continue to break those small resistances to the biggest one around 59, we could have again a retry to a new all time high. Let's see what happens. The RSI is very, very bullish, pointing upwards, and the MACD also crossing. So let's see if it crossed already. Not yet, but almost there. As you can see, the two lines are very, very close. If the blue line crosses the orange line, we have a MACD bullish indication also that we are going to the upside again. The BitMEX funding rate is very nicely below my threshold of 0.11%, and we are now at 0.03. So, as I said on my uh, Twitter also yesterday, after all, all that big volatility and those candles coming back to the downside here, uh, more than $1 billion was liqui liquidated uh, of longs. And this, of course, reset the market to a new retry to break that resistance around 60K. So that was a very, very good uh, thing that happened yesterday. I was calling for it for a long time already. The market was overlonged if you can say that. Uh, so I guess a lot of people lost uh, a lot of money. One More than $1 billion in one day was liquidated. But this is good for the spot market. This is good for Bitcoin. And the market was reset again for a new uh, try to break the all-time highs. Okay, so also on the 4-hour, the Fisher distance from the EMA is neutral. And let's just check on the 1-hour quickly. How is the BitMEX funding rate? This is the most accurate indication, is the one hour chart for me, in my opinion. So everyone, every trader has their own opinion, but for me, it's the one hour chart, which gives you the bar for the last hour or the peak for the last hour, which is exactly 0 .0 0.03. So uh, also the same as the four hour, but in a more accurate way, you can see it here, Sometimes it's a bit different from the four hour. So this is a good one to check the BitMEX funding rate. So the market sentiment right now is, in my opinion, uh, more bullish than bearish. Although we are still in this range, uh, exactly in the middle of the range, which is what I call the dump zone. The dump zone is the area of no trading. You should not enter any trades here. You should only... Uh, use the strategy for take profit if we approach the 60k and the market indicates that it's going to reverse again to the downside or if we have a breakout of the 60k then it's time for long the market uh, to long the market and you can uh, have some entries there okay i don't want to take uh, a long time here because we still have the pro indicator strategy and one question to answer and i don't want the video to become very very long Okay, so the pro indicators uh, strategy is here. This is the four hour chart. As I said in my previous video, I already changed my ranging channel because this one, I, it, this, uh, uh, this range boundary here, which is now called the, the first range boundary was my third range boundary. But as we had the third range boundary above the first range boundary in my previous analysis, I reset the count. This now became the first range boundary. This is the second range boundary and the third range boundary. So this is my new analysis for the pro indicators strategy. Um, this is also better than before because now you have a bullish uh, ranging channel pointing to the downside. We already had the price action breaking this channel here. We, however, are trying and struggling to keep the price action going to the upside. But as long as we at least come close to the third range boundary breakout line, this orange dashed line here, and we can break it, 
this could mean new all-time highs for Bitcoin, and that's a very good situation. However, if we go back to the downside, I don't see Bitcoin going below the 54k or just a bit below 54k if this is like a, some kind of weak uh, from a candle but then rapidly going to the upside again so as we see here the trending ch the the trend channel this zigzag green uh, zigzag line here is where the big support would be if we still have another decline to the downside so and the blue line also i don't believe that we would go much further below than 54k so that's my um, probability for the moment is that we could go for another try so this is the biggest probability for me we could go for another retry to break the third range boundary uh, breakout line and if that is successful we could be just on the verge of new all-time highs um, I don't want to extend this uh, very much as you can see also down here we have the sine wave and the momentum lines going upwards this is also a good indication and I hope when they reach the top and start to curve back down that we are already at least closer to that orange dashed line over there and that we might have a retry to break it so okay so now i want to just go to the last item on my list which is the question i get a lot and the question is basically i tried to rephrase the question to a better way because i get this question in many different forms uh, but the question to me is how to manage different entry points position and I would like to take you guys to the daily chart of this pro momentum uh, framework and you will see three circles with three different colors and I'm going to explain this um, in a way that I guess it will be easy for anyone to understand but if you guys still have any doubts after this just please leave a comment below tell me that you did not understand something and I will try to explain it so let's suppose the green is an entry point and this entry point was made around the 15th of March 2020 and the price was around five thousand five hundred dollars then you have and this could be different traders or this could be the same trader with different positions but uh, you can understand it as you want it doesn't matter it just matters is the position so let's suppose there is another long position that started here this was the entry point around 20,000 when the breakout occurred um, and then you have the last position the last entry position around here when the market retraced from the all-time high then all-time high of around 57 or 58k uh, back to 44k and this happened around the 28th of february this year so let's suppose you as a trader have three entry points three longs that you started uh, around these dates and these prices and how should you manage these positions if you are long bitcoin with these entry points so i'm going to give you my perspective which is a bit more aggressive than regular conservative traders uh, my position being more aggressive means that i like to take a bit more risk than the conservative trader but maybe i can explain it to you uh, both different different uh, perspectives so in my perspective for example if I have this long position here, the green circle that was started around five thousand and a half dollars, uh, I would not touch this position. I would just let it ride the wave and I would not be so much worried about this position by now because the price is, uh, you know, much higher than my entry position and this position is having a lot of profit so I would not be really worried about the position I took around 5,500 if this is the my other position and guys I'm giving you the perspective of uh, a bit more aggressive um, a bit more aggressive as uh, as a trader instead of the conservative one so as a bit more aggressive trader this position here 
I would not also be very worried about it. Uh, if you, uh, so this is a position that started around twenty thousand, uh, twenty thousand dollars, and this is the middle of December last year when we had the breakout of the twenty. I would not do a lot to this position. I would consider only if I see any any signs that the market could have a big correction right now, which is not giving me the, those indications, I would also not be really worried about the position that I started around $20,000. Now, I have a third position here in red, and also note that I have a green, a yellow, and a red circle, and these are uh, the colors of different risks. Of course, the green is the less risky position for me as an aggressive trader, the yellow is the middle one and the red is the higher risk position that we have right now because it's much closer to the current price action. So this position here as an aggressive as an aggressive trader what I would do is probably when we get closer to the third range boundary line here around $60,000 I would take consider taking 25% uh, take profit from this position, so I would uh, consider 25, maybe a bit more depending on the market conditions, but for me as an aggressive trader, I would only consider maybe from zero to 25, maximum, maximum maybe 30% uh, take profit from this position, and I would leave the rest, and I would set a stop loss around the 49 to $48,000, uh, which is, as you see, the next, the next, uh, the the next range boundary from from this chart is around the fifty one thousand, with a week that extends a bit more to the downside to fifty. So I would set a stop loss around here forty nine, maybe forty eight, uh, to be a bit more aggressive and not be stopped out. Um, I would consider maybe 48,000 as my stop loss for this position and taking 25% max of profit if the price action goes really close or even touches the third range boundary breakout line, which is currently at $60,000. From a perspective of a more conservative trader, I would say the green entry continues to do nothing. I would not uh, consider any take profit at this point for that position. I would just let it ride the wave. And the yellow position, I would diminish the 25% from the red circle. I would put it on the yellow. So if the price reaches the third range boundary line, I would consider taking 25% of this position, setting my stop loss for a range for a level around the $42,000, $40,000, which is $42,000, $41,000, which is a bit below the red circle, if you see there on the chart. And then for this here, I would consider taking 50% as a take profit if the price action goes closer to the $60,000 area again. So this is the way I usually manage positions. I usually use the first one, which is the more aggressive, uh, more aggressive, uh, let's say, trader personality. Uh, so just to sum it up, 25% for the more aggressive on the red circle with a stop loss below that point over there on the chart, which would be around the 48,000. And this one, I would not do anything. And the green one also not do anything. Let me just get this a bit closer. Maybe some people could not see it very well. So, and the more conservative uh, approach, I would say, but take this into account. The only, uh, the only market structure where you should consider having a take profit uh, approach to any of these th uh, three positions is when the price action gets closer to the third range boundary area. So you should not uh, take profits before the price goes a bit more to the upside and gets closer to that dashed orange line over there. So again, uh, the more conservative would be 50% take profit for the red circle, stop loss below or around the 48,000 area, 25% for the yellow position, 
uh, the stop loss would be below the red circle and this would be around 42,000. So this is the way I would manage the or answer the question how to manage different entry points and entry uh, and different positions uh, if you are long the market. You have here three different entry points for this bull market, three different uh, positions uh, um, on the market and two different personalities for a trader, the more aggressive one, the more conservative one. And I gave you my view of how I would do it if I was an aggressive trader, which I consider myself a bit more aggressive trader than conservative trader, and what would do the conservative trader if that was me. So uh, I hope this helps, and I hope this um, is the answer to many questions out there about how to manage the positions, how to know when to get out of the market. And of course, we are in a bull market, so that's why I'm considering having taking profit actions and not exit my positions if this was turning to or if i was having any signs that the bull market was going to turn bearish at some point maybe i would increase my take profits or even consider exiting the red circle position for example and then uh, try to ride the wave with the other two positions and that would be my approach to this market so i hope i answered your question i know a lot of people was asking about this and uh, let's see if this helps uh, some people to understand a bit better how how to navigate the markets in a situation like this okay guys the video is already very very extended uh, um, so i would just like to stop the screen share um, and I hope you enjoyed this content. Smash the like button if you did. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and share it with your friends. Let's grow the community. It helps me a lot. Uh, if I grow the community, also I have another kind of uh, features from YouTube that can help me to produce more content and good content to, uh, for you guys. And I hope to see you all in the next one. I hope that the next one could be on Saturday or Sunday with a live stream. And let's see how the outcome of the poll uh, um, will turn out. So see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.